Oh, there was a vulnerability that dropped today or was announced today um, with a CVSS score of 10, which is the highest. But there's a caveat to that because it's not as bad as it seems. Uh, but it's still quite a cool vulnerability and I kind of wanted to show it off. So the vulnerability itself was announced predominantly within Rust, the Rust Lang. And it was the interaction between how Rust Lang called um, the Windows command process to run a bat file. So a bat file is just a file that you can use to run a series of commands. We have one on the screen here. I can pull it up. And um, in this case, it's just echoing an argument that's received and then passing the argument. Let me uh, zoom in on that a little bit. Good. Um, so that's all a bat file is. It's fairly um, straightforward. But the vulnerability was with how Rustlang was interacting with it and that you could actually escape the um, arguments. Uh, that you were passing and run whatever code you wanted and um, it'll come and get a little bit clearer whenever uh, whenever we run through it but it was curious because all of the articles and everything seems to really shout about rust however there was one um, in the original article there was a small section where it mentioned this also affects other languages and it made a list of golang java python uh, php i believe node.js there was quite a few um, Ruby was the other one, and um, it seemed to be that the vulnerability was more with how the um, how Windows was calling its command line function in that that could be escaped. It wasn't necessarily to do with the language itself specifically. Some caveats to that because there was differences that we've seen in the languages. So from my understanding, it's more down to how the compiler is interacting with this, but um, I digress. I'll link all the articles and stuff below. You can have a read um, for it yourself. Um, I think it's quite an interesting one. So I've got the Rust code here. If we go into it, and um, you can see it's it's fairly straightforward. So this is just a POC to show the vulnerability of how it works. Obviously, the difference with this is that it would, um, if you had a production say application that was public facing that people could put input into much like cross-site scripting or sql injection or something like that that allows a user to put code in where they're not meant to and um, this is another vulnerability where they could do that where they could input um, additional arguments and escape them quite trivially trivially trivial trivially 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 words are hard escape it quite easily and and then run commands and things that that you know, they want to run this is obviously a very just shortened down version where we're just calling a bat file um this obviously only affects windows because batch files batch files are only windows based so um any linux or unix operating systems are, are not affected by this it is purely windows based um but we can see the command that it's running um the uh, or pulling in the sub process command this is the command in question that's then calling um windows um, we've then got print line to enter the payload. We're getting the uh, strings. We're then sorting the STD out if there's any um, errors. Reading the line, getting the output. Um, and uh, here's the command actually being called here where we're then executing that test bat file. Um, and then the rest of this is all fairly standard um, Rust code. So I'm going to run this and just show you what's going on and try and talk through it. Um, so if I do a cargo run. Oh, hold on. Oh, yeah, no, that's correct. Uh, it's just complaining the name's not in camel case. Um, so if I run, say, hello, it echoes back hello because it's calling this batch file, which is just calling back the argument in question. Um, uh, something to note as well, this Rust code was not written by me. Um, it was written by, let me get their name. Yeah, they go by Frostbitten uh, on, on GitHub um, and they showed the, the Rust POC. Having seen that there was other languages called out, I've then converted that code into other languages to see what pops, and I've got a working Python one as well that's that's also up on GitHub. Um, but I just want to call it out that this code here um, was was written by them. Um, so the batch file itself is just echoing, just printing to the screen whatever is passed to it. So if I just go back into the Rust, and we're going to run that again. And we're doing cargo run and enter whatever we want to do. So this time we'll go hello, but we will put in uh, double quotes and we will say and which is command line we want to run this command and run another one and let's run who am I 
we can see that it did run the hello. It then got the escape and then printed the response from who am I. Now I want to stress that this isn't escaping quotes here. So doing input validation on this bit is not the case. It's not getting, um, we're not escaping this command being called. We're escaping the call that's going to the batch file. Whenever the batch files, um, the process is being called and it's running um, its, uh, its processes, it's then executing there. So th this is why this is a uh, more of a vulnerability rather than necessarily just requiring input validation. Input validation would help to, if we say just, you know, don't allow double quotes, which some languages have updated their documentation to say, if you're using code in this way, remove uh, the ability for users to put double quotes or remove them before they get passed to the command. Um, Rust has been updated. The uh, Either the newest version or the version coming out, they've updated their compiler so that it will um, handle this for you so that this will no longer work. Um, however, we go over here to Python. We have our uh, our own one um, that we've generated and Python has just updated the documentation to say if you're using batch files in this way, you need to do input sanitization. Okay, so I just had to update my path there because it was from my other uh, other machine. Um, so we have to pass the full path whenever we're using Python. Um, I'm, I'm not sure why that is, um, but just it, it wants the full path. So we've got the full path in there. Um, apart from that, this is very, very basic. Um, if you know Python at all, you'll know that this is, is very simple. We're importing subprocesses, which is a common module here. We can see some information about it that is um, saying it, it basically spawns some processes. We're going to do a print statement to get the payload. We're going to get the payload as input. Then we're going to do a lovely try accept statement here. We're going to do a sub processes run. We're going to run the batch file with the input, the arguments that we want to pass. Um, capture the output true. We want it to be a shell and we want it to return text. Fairly standard um, uh, sub processes. And then we've got printing outputs to outputs, any errors to errors, uh, and then also error in here. This one's a little bit superfluous, but well, eh, fine. Um, and then we call it under main. Simple, easy as that. So I'm going to run this and show you what that looks like now. So we'll do a Python and we want to run. Oh, I'm in the wrong folder. Never mind. Go back one. Nope, oh, we've got the Python ready and we run that. And it's now asking for the payload. So again, we're going to do the hello, double quotes. And this time I'm going to spawn calc. Exe, just so that we can see that you know we spawn uh, an application as well, or we can spawn an application. If I run that, and we can see that calc did in fact spawn. You could have seen it pop up there as well. Close that. Just run that again, just to uh, just in case you think I am tricking you. So we'll go who, and then we'll go and who am I? We print it out again. We we'll see we get the who am I as well. And again, this isn't escaping these quotes. It's not these quotes that it's escaping. It's escaping the um, the process that's actually then being called in the background to spin up the um, the command line. So being able to tweak things here would not actually help down here. Again, that's why it's the vulnerability. Um, I've been testing with uh, another couple of languages. I'm planning to do more Java's the next one that I want to test with and Golang. Um, I, I tested it with Ruby and Ruby was not um, not vulnerable from what I could tell, at least from, from copying the code as it is in this sort of way of calling um, background functionality, it um, it didn't detect anything um, or sorry, it didn't, uh, it, it wouldn't do this. It would just um, print the whole thing as a string, which is great. That's what we want. Um, so it seemed to be at least Ruby um, wasn't affected, which is cool. Um, but I do want to test Java Golang um, as well, at least. Um, I don't know Java that well, so it might take me a bit. Um, but I mean, the code itself is fairly, at least to test it, is fairly straightforward. Um, Golang um, shouldn't take me too long to do, so I'm going to do that. But something that I do want to test here, and just out of curiosity, is what this looks like from an EDR perspective. So um, some of you may have used Elastic Stack before, um, so I'm going to run that now. And I'm going to dig through Elastic Stack and see if I can see this process being called. And I'm just curious what it looks like. Does it look overly suspicious or weird or anything like sort of funny about it? Um, so I'm going to dig through Elastic Stack now, 
and uh, I'll come back whenever I find anything, if I do. Okay, so I'm not saying thing direct, anything directly in the logs, but I'm also not passing log sources that well into um, into Elasticstack. But DDR is installed, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to trigger an alert. So I'm running a hello and then piping that to the winpeas.bat, which is a very malicious, very fingerprinted um, enumeration or privilege escalation enumeration script. Um, obviously, this is a batch format. Um, and and see the alerts in that way, I'll be able to see um, the flow of what it looked like when that process was actually um, actually triggered. Um, and just to be clear, so what's happening here is that I am using a Python uh, piece of Python code to call a batch file. That batch file accepts multiple arguments because of the way that the underlying OS, um, or at least the compiler, passes the arguments to the batch file. It can be escaped and additional commands can be um, sent to command prompt. So we're calling one batch file. We're then saying, okay, we're we're escaping that batch file's arguments and we're going to just send another command in the command line to run a new batch file. It doesn't have to be a batch file. As I showed, you could run your know, um, calculator, you could run uh, commands, you could execute code, you could pull stuff down. Um, it is you can do whatever you want it's effectively just like a command line you can do whatever you want um and again this would be particularly devastating if um there was a public facing web application like flask or django or something that was making calls in the back end that was relying on batch files and then that the user could then put input in and call it back obviously the scope of this is is limited okay so it's very severe if someone got their hands on it and were able to do it but the actual um worry or the actual like you know likelihood of this happening is quite small and is reasonably easily mitigated um so i'm gonna let this run and i'll come back whenever we start seeing some alerts in elastic stack okay so uh linpeas has been running for a bit um or sorry winbees and uh, as you can see we've generated 117 <laughs> alerts um i haven't looked at these yet but um we're just going to go ahead and go into the analysis analyzer sorry and let's Scroll down and have a look. Uh, so we've got a little bit of a weird chain here, but that's probably expected. So we've got code.exe, which is um, VS Code. Makes sense. That, that is a process that we're running from. We then had a PowerShell shell in it. So that is this shell that we're in here. So again, all makes sense. We're then running Python. And Python is then calling... Uh, command.exe and we've got two library starts in here so i'm just curious what these show if anything okay so those two libraries um don't show a whole lot so let's go into the uh, command uh let me just see if i can see anything interesting okay that is interesting so we can see here the command uh, .exe is being ran. It's um, got process args here. And we can see in this block here, hopefully that's uh, visible, we can see the full path to the um, batch file. And then we see hello. We don't see peas.bat. We don't see that being called there. Now, that doesn't mean it's not somewhere else, but at least in the initial sort of look through of what arguments were passed to this, we don't actually see the um, the additional command that was tagged on there. Oh, I tell lie, I tell lie, we do, we do. It's further down. So that's seen as one full arg. Okay, sorry, that was a formatting issue. Um, or sorry, uh, uh, not being used to Elastic Stack and how it lays these things out. Um, so yes, we can see that it does do the, um, we can see the escape character, then the and, and then the, the peas.bat. Um, and then that's spawned all of this nonsense. So this is one specific alert. So this is only a small part of it. And um, so we can see that that, um, that that was called in there. That's generated a couple of alerts for um, unusual, uh, was it uh, a window system discovery? Sorry. And then let's see what's this one. This is uh, the alert reason is process uh, system info parent process by CMD created a low on alert for uh, unusual command line processes. Okay, so it was weird that it was spawned from command line, I, I believe is what that one is saying. 
Um, interesting. Let's close that. So we can see we've got an absolute boatload. Like I say, 117 alerts. Uh, if I refresh that, I'm sure it's probably went up. Uh, sorry, the refresh is a bit funky in here. Sometimes I have to go out and in. No, 117. That seems to be where we're stopping. Um, something that is interesting is that I don't know whether the uh, wind piece has actually stopped. I haven't gotten any output for it. That's not a big deal too bad. If um, if I was an attacker, I'd be having this. Well, I wouldn't want to use wind piece for a start, but if I was an attacker, I would have this being output to a file or being sent out to you know, C2 server or something like that. Um, so that's not a big deal that I'm not getting output here. But again, it may still be running. I'm not sure. Um, but let's do some more rows of the page. I'm just going to have a quick flick through and see if there's anything else interesting here. Okay, so nothing else um, overly interesting there. It was standard Linpees, Winpees stuff. Um, so, I mean, that, that that's what it looks like. So you can see that something's been spawned off it. Um, the visualization is, is quite interesting in that it's it's showing that... Um, go into here. Uh, that you can see the uh, command being called and then the, the um, arguments that are being passed. What is interesting, now again, this might be the way that um, Elastic Stack visualizes these things, but I would have expected it to split off and be under a separate process rather than being the same process. Um, but um, it, it doesn't seem to be. It does look like it's running under the same process. So it's running all of those commands under that same parent process, which is interesting. I think you can maybe hide things in there um and run under the radar depending on what's being called because if this is a legitimate service that's say running um flask for example and you've got it running some back-end things through a batch file that process itself is probably going to be fairly trusted if an analyst sees it and says oh this process is doing something doing something with the network well, it's flask it's going to have network based stuff that might not be a loot unusual that may not um trigger alarm bells whereas if it spawns a new process i think that would look a little bit uh more suspicious so um i think that's quite interesting again I, I don't know if it's maybe just formatting that maybe it is spawning a new process and it just hasn't displayed it that way i'm not sure if anyone knows um let me know i uh, might ping elastic stack and uh ask them just in case but yeah that's it that's that's the vulnerability um as i said there is a a github repo on my github let me just grab that so this one here um, that has the um, uh, the Python version, little readme sort of explaining what's going on um, and the batch file. And there's also then a couple of links to the original um, research post and then also the uh, user who created the Rust POC. Um, so that's all in there as well. So what do you think of this vulnerability? What do you think of this kind of video? Do you, these things interesting at all? Let me know. Um, if you want me to do more things like this, I certainly can. As I said, I'm going to upload this out of schedule just because I'm excited about it. I think it's quite fucking cool. So I'm going to post this right away. Um, so let me know what you think if there's anything, um, anything that you think we could try with this. I, I'm, I'm curious if there's something you could do from like a privilege escalation perspective. So let's say you're on, um, on a computer that has something that's running that's interacting with a batch file. If you could like inject something in there, could you? potentially do some privilege escalation i don't know um i feel like there's there's other things that could be done with this um but not sure if you have any ideas let me know below so yeah see you later